G'day guys, Calvin, Cartoon Company in New Zealand. Are you wiring up an aftermarket ECU? In this case I'm using a link, and you've run out of temperature inputs, and you want to add an extra one on an analog channel. Today I'm going to wire up a little link, we're doing a little link monsoon, we're going to add a temperature channel on one of the analogs, because I'm adding one of these sensors to it. What I've done is I've built, <clears throat> built up a wiring loom for my normal UZ engine. And I've made it so it can take either a, an atom or it can take a monsoon. With the monsoon option, I've made up two little looms here so we can run either a, just an oil pressure switch, which comes up by the dash, or we can add an oil pressure sensor, which can come up to the ECU, and then the ECU can output an oil light. Or we can do that same oil pressure, but add a oil temperature as well. That can be on a, a combination sensor, such as this Bosch unit, or on a, a separate fluid temperature sensor. So either of them will work just fine. And I'm making up this video for my mate Zane. I'm gonna dedicate this one to Zane. I made up a wiring loom for him for his HQ Holden. Uh, it's his 24 hour lemon car. And now he's decided to add extra temperature sensors. And so he was running a storm and he doesn't have enough. He had uh, three temperature inputs. Um, a dedicated temperature and he is wanting to add gearbox temp and an oil temp as well Not sure what we did the other air with the other temperature sensor actually coolant temp air temp And something else maybe he's using that one for oil and he wants to add the gearbox With the monsoon we only get two air temp water temp are the two normal so I'm wanting to add that uh, oil temperature as well the, the customer of this loom may not go for the upgrade with the oil pressure sensor and that, that's fine This is a sort of a, a budget type loom, but the options are there if people want to do that and I highly recommend it myself Let's get into it. Uh, so there is some help in the link software It's a great place to refer back to and the, the link software the help file is really really helpful Funnily enough, because that's the help file and that's what it's meant to do. Let's have a look where we can find it. Righto, so here we have uh, our G4X software. Help file at the top. Pop into there. Um, probably, I think it's wiring information. We'll expand that out. And we've got input signal wiring. It's an analog input. Temperature sensors, and then it says down here, I'll just move this across so we can see it. Using voltage channels with NTC sensors. There we go. And there's a bit of information about adding a pull-up resistor. Um, and it can be done with... Understanding this this way of doing it also helps wiring a standard ECU and sharing a temperature sensor And that's shown here at the bottom, but we're going to do the top one. We're going to pull a Pull-up resistor between the 5 volt and the analog volt signal sense uh, channel channel. That's what we want to do As you can see here, it's uh, saying we want a 1k ohm resistor and it says a little bit about it, but you get the idea there. Let's get in and, and get this wiring loom changed and make this work. What's your wiring? What's your thought about the wiring? Got it? Okay, I'm going to do wiring. Here you go. Thank you, miss. So I have already made up a little loom to plug into uh, my outlet and my branch. That allows me to plug in whichever sensor I want to plug in. We have a wire coming up here to the ECU. 
And I'm using AN Volt 4 for the uh, temperature. Which happens to be this, that little uh, gray wire right there. So I'm gonna pop that wire out of the ECU, like that. I'd already popped the, the locking tab. And then also on my output, here is my five volt output. So it comes out of the ECU, comes up, and there is my five volt going out to each of my other sensors. So we've got the five volt supply to this pressure sensor itself. We've got a five volt uh, to the uh, map sensor and a five volt to the, the TPS. I could have put the resistor out here across the, the, the branch out on that unit there, but I'm gonna add it up by the ECU. Because if you're using a, a sensor like that, a normal two pin, you're not gonna have a five volt out of it. So I've added another five volt in here. We're gonna crimp it in. And then we've got the, the signal wire that comes into the ECU. We're gonna branch off that one as well. Right at this point, we've got a branch coming off our signal wire, and we've got a spare five volt just floating around. And that's where we're gonna attach this, the resistor between the two of them. I'm going to return the signal wire back into the ECU. With the way I've set this ECU and loom up, this will give um, two temperature inputs for a atom, but if the uh, person decides to upgrade to a monsoon, then they're going to be able to use the additional features of um, the monsoon and, and the extra temperature input. As with a lot of people who do wiring, I've got the big box of resistors. And these ones should be the 1K resistors. I always like to check with the multimeter. 996, close enough to me. So at this point we're going to uh, pop basically the resistor across these two wires. Like that. Probably not quite like that, probably a little bit neater. All right, so there we have our resistor wired in. Signal wire is going into the ECU, and there's our five volt supply for that resistor. I'm 
Of course, there are other ways of adding the resistors if you wanted to. Uh, this is just one suggestion. It's the way I like to do them. I like to be able to see where the resistor is. So it can be checked if necessary. One of the reasons I like to do it this way, and I like to add the ability to put the oil temperature or other temperatures in, is to get the most out of the ECU. Even with quite a budget ECU, like the little Monsoon, we can do a lot with it. I'm running a V8, I've got idle speed control, I've got oil pressure, uh, I've got oil temperature by doing this modification. Of course I've got the TPS, I've got an idle switch, I've got a start input, and I'll, so I've almost used every single pin on the ECU. In this case, I've got one pin blanked off, which I've, I've allocated for speed input. So we could even use the ECU to calibrate the speedo if it's an electronic speedo. That allows us to do, as I said, a whole lot of stuff. I've got, we're wired up. Now we're ready to configure it into the ECU. I'm gonna put this loom onto the engine, set it all up, and we'll have a look at how I configure the oil temperature into the ECU. Relays and fuses are set up now. And as you can see, the wiring loom is fitted to the engine. So everything's on like, like it should be. And it goes vroom vroom. Uh, I touch this wire onto that terminal there. So now let's set up that oil temperature. The sensor's in my hand. We might plug it into the wiring loom. All right, here we go. So we see up here we are online. And we're going to pop over and put that oil temperature in. Analog invo in inputs. Analog inputs, yep. Um, is there an oil temperature? There it is, look at that. There's an oil temperature as an option. Source. And we are putting it onto AN volt 4, right there. Now if I have the low set higher than zero and the high set lower than five, then a fault code is, is generated if the temperature sensor falls outside that. And that would give us, in this case, an error value at say at 75. The calibration for those little Bosch units is a Bosch NTC. So that works perfectly because it's NTC. And we can see here the pull-up resistor, it's external pull-up resistor of 1K. And you've got choices of, of what it is. I could have put a 1K5, a few others on it, but I just generally just use that 1K on it. And then we need to check that we're actually getting the reading that we'd expect. You can see here we've got a voltage reading um, on engine temp. If I go to the tuning, have I got it on there? I don't have it in there. We'll go to tuning up here, runtime values. <coughs> Here's our oil temp voltage right there, 3.51 volts. And we will find it under general, I believe. Right there. Oil temperature, 22.2, 22.2, that sounds not bad, if we just go over here, I have had the engine running, um, 
the engine, see the temperature is saying that it is, is 38 degrees and it's 29 on the air temp. So oil there, where is my air temp plugged into? It's actually sitting on the side of the engine. I just moved that air temp away. It was sitting physically on the side of the engine. And we'll see where that air temp settles. It's looking like it's about 21 degrees in my workshop today. Oh, 22. So that's pretty close to the 21.9 that we've got over here. So I'm calling that, that close enough. That system's working like it should. Pull up resistors in there. We're all pretty happy. It pays just to double check that the oil temp when it's cold is similar to the others, to the water temp and the air temp because they all should be about the same if the engine hasn't been running. So as you can see, it's nice and simple to run an external resistor to give you extra temperature inputs where they don't exist as specific temperature inputs. While I'm at it, I'm just trying to check the oil pressure. We've got the sensor. I've got an engine, it's not running, but we can see how much we can blow. I'm going to blow about 8 PSI. <laughs> so I hope that's been helpful. Zane, we'll see you at the racing. We'll talk to you soon. Catch you later.